that I don't have money to invest is a mindset, right? And if you speak like that and you say that out loud, you don't have money to invest. And that will be your story for the rest of your life. But you can always find the money if you are resourceful enough. The 1% rule is for beginners. And so when I posted that reel, I had these people who were like long time, you know, investors, like that's not, that's not how we do it. And I'm like, I'm not talking to you. You know, like this content is not for you. So in the beginning, like you need to have rules, like when it comes to investing, because you can get really screwed if you pick the wrong deal based off of projections, right? You're like, oh, I hope one day I'm going to get this amount of rent. But if you buy it with hopes, then like sometimes that can crumble. Sometimes things go good and it ends up like cash flowing. But most of the time, like things don't always work out like as planned, right? So uh, you always want to like go with that 1% rule, which is basically like I would say, if you haven't done more than 20 deals, you need to do the 1% rule. And what this is, is a buy and hold strategy. So that means you're buying a property to then hold and cash flow. So this is something you would add into your portfolio to get cash flow like monthly. Okay. So the 1% rule is you basically base the purchase price off of the rent you're going to be able to get. So if you purchase something for $160,000, you want to be able to get 1% of that monthly, which is $1,600. And so a lot of people commented and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, um, where are you going to be able to find a $160,000 house to get $1,600 out of it? You have to be smart about picking your market. That's why it's so smart to pick a market. You don't want to pick dead markets. And a lot of people were like also, because I'm in California, you know, you're not going to be able to find that in California. Yes, I agree. You're not necessarily going to be able to find that in California. Maybe in a place like Bakersfield, you will be able to. I just picked up a house there for $125,000. I'm going to put some rehab into it, but I'm going to get over $2,000 a month in that property. Because guess what? Supply and demand, baby. Okay. So I understand that market. I'm born and raised there. I know what things are renting for and what things are selling for because I've studied it. So don't just go and go off the 1% rule in a market that you don't know because, you know, you could get screwed. And if you're talking to someone who is just getting going in real estate, do you think they should go all in on learning one type of real estate or like really try to figure out different kinds of things? I think when you're in the beginning, you should try all of it. So then you can find out what you like because there's wholesaling that you could do. And that's when you are basically acting like a broker. And in some states, it's illegal. Okay, so check your state. In California, where I'm from, you can do it. So that means I can go to a distressed property. This is how we picked up the house that we're literally closing on today because we were driving on, uh, I can't say the street, but it's by my high school, East High School in Bakersfield. And we saw this property, it was ugly. And I love ugly properties, okay? And we called on this property because I have software and crafted deals where you can get people's numbers. And we found out that this property had been inherited. Nobody lives in it, okay? And he owns it free and clear but he's behind in taxes because he can't keep up with the property taxes. He's not a real estate investor, okay? He doesn't have the mindset. He doesn't want it. He wants to get rid of this property. So wholesaling is we were able to say, okay, hey, I'll give you $125,000 for this property. And then we went and found an investor to buy it at a bigger price. It was around $140,000. So we made a $15,000 assignment fee in that because we found the deal. We made the deal happen. So the investor is still going to flip that property, right? But it's so cool. And that takes a little bit of sweat equity. It took time to be able to call that person up. Some people, when they get started, they don't have time. There's other resources. You could use call centers. There are so many things that can help you nowadays to wholesale a property. But you should try it once and see if you like it. Some people, they don't like that. They don't want to have to negotiate and, and work that whole thing and call and try to talk people into selling their house. I love it because like what gets me going every single day is the art of the deal. It's like negotiating. It's talking people into, um, you know, and like making a win-win situation for everybody. I love that. Like that just, it's just fun. And where do you think is the best place to go to start to learn about how to structure deals and do those things? We crafted deals. You should come into my program. So what's so cool is my brother-in-law has flipped over 400 properties He's also wholesale a ton. He has a solar business where he like sol sells like solar panels to people. 
And he's also a broker and uh, he's a licensed broker in California. So he's done a lot and we partnered to create crafted deals because he's bringing a lot more experience to the table when it comes to flipping homes. And myself, I'm bringing this amazing software that we created to help people find off-market deals. And we're also bringing my social media and branding background to the table because nowadays, the way that you get to where you want to go a lot quicker is by people bringing the deals to you. So if you learn how to brand yourself as a real estate investor and start creating content for people who might want to sell their home to you um, or could be potentially investors for you, so you add them to your buyers list, you're, you're like you're saving yourself so much time. So that's really where I come in with my expertise. So I'm pumped about that. What do you look for in a market to know if it's actually going to be a good market to invest in? Well, okay. So you need to look at, uh, there's 10 things really. You want to look at the neighborhood. You want to look at the schools. You want to look at the crime in the area. You need to drive the neighborhood. Um, whatever market you're wanting to go in, I would pick zip codes and then go and drive that and really understand the economy there. Go to the Chamber of Commerce, find out what are the businesses that are going to be coming into town. Uh, go and drive the neighborhood. Is there a lot of boarded up houses? And is there a lot of boarded up businesses? That's not a good market for you to be in because business is dying there. I want to go where there's a growing economy. Just a couple months ago, I flew out to Georgia with um, my cousin, who's a broker in the South over there. And we were doing, we were driving because we're trying to find like the next market over there for us. And we spoke with the Chamber of Commerce and we just did a lot of like driving by to see, is there a Starbucks? Okay. If a Starbucks is around, then that's a good sign because that means business is flowing. Their Starbucks is a very genius business. They only put themselves in market with people that are willing to pay $5 a day for a coffee. Okay. So those are my types of tenants. You also want to look on the, like you could look on Trulia or Zillow and you can find out the supply. So how many houses are currently on the market for rent? How many uh, houses are currently on the market for sale? And go and look and see in the last six months, what are the prices of the homes that have sold in that area? And that will help you determine, is this a growing market? Have things been on the market for over 120 days? Is there a lot of houses if that's the case, I don't want to go into that market because people aren't buying there, right? So uh, also go and see where homes have been flipped. You can tell. If you go on Zillow right now, you can tell if a home's been flipped because it just looks like HGTV. Like, you know, they all pick the same exact tile, the laminate flooring. It, it all looks the same. But that's a good thing for an investor because you go, oh, if another investor is here, then that means I want to get into this market, okay? Because they see something too. And when you're talking about going on Zillow and seeing how many are for rent, how many are for sale, like, is there a ratio or something that you're looking for? Like, how do you actually identify that? So for me, like just deciding to go back into Bakersfield, for instance, I picked the zip code and then I went and looked that there was like four houses on the market. Okay. And the one that had been flipped in the area went for like over $300,000. And I was, I knew I was going to get this house for one twenty five. So I was like, this is like this is a smart deal for me. There were only a couple houses. Like that's like nothing. But if you go and you're in a market and you see that a lot of houses are for sale on the same street in the same area, like something's wrong. You know, I don't like that. Like why are people wanting to get out of here? Another thing I just did when I was in Scottsdale like two weeks ago is I drove the neighborhood we're buying an apartment complex in and you could see the regentrification in the neighborhood. There's some, the flippers that have already been in there to make houses beautiful. And then you see a lot of ugly houses too. But you go, that's opportunity for me. When you got started, what was like your biggest mistake? Um, well, I've never lost money in real estate. Here's why I've never lost money in real estate, because I've always had a mentor. I've lost money in a lot of other things. In oil, because I listened to people that were, I didn't understand how uh, financial advisors worked at the time. I didn't understand they got paid fees because I was just making a lot of money and I thought, oh, you know, like. They want to help me make more money. I didn't realize they were getting paid off of the transactions they were selling me. Like they were going to get paid either way. I thought they only get paid if this deal went well. So I put in hundreds of thousands of dollars into several oil deals and most of them went bad. And so my mistake was just blindly trusting people. Like I know now do your due diligence. So ask and understand the market that you're investing in. I didn't understand oil. I should have never invested in it. 
Um, thankfully, some went okay, right? But uh, and for the majority, like they went wrong. So that's, I think, the mistake that people make is they don't understand enough and they try to just do it alone. They try to watch the YouTube videos, watch reels like this and think they know enough to go out and invest. Just like go and save yourself time and money because money you can always make more of, but time you can't. Like you're only given a certain amount of time on this earth. So I go to the mentors that have what I want and they literally like what would take me five years to figure out alone and way more deals to figure out. I can work with one mentor one time and he shortcuts the process for me and I can just get to where I want to go a lot quicker. So I'm always willing to invest money to find out the secrets of people who have gone before. So I think that's the mistake people make is trying to do it alone. And is that why you decided to start your own fund and like the trainings and all the things with it so you could bring people along? Okay. So the reason why I decided to start my, my real estate fund was because I was investing in other people's funds and I was getting annoyed because I was telling my friends about it. And I was like, Hey, can I get a kickback for like, you know, telling all these people about it? And they were like, no. And at the time I didn't understand there were securities involved and like you legally cannot do that. But the guy just kind of like shut the door in my face and was like, no, and that was the dumbest thing he did because, you know, if he would have just taught me, I probably would have made him a lot of money. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out and figure out how to do this myself. And that very same night, some of our best friends came over for dinner. His name's Kyle Circle. He had just gotten back from a real estate mastermind. And he's a really great networker. And I told him like, hey, what do you think about me starting a real estate fund? He was like, dude, I was just at a mastermind with this guy that teaches people how to start funds. And his name is Bridger Pennington. And so literally the next day I joined Bridger's program because I take action. And I think that's one thing that people should learn from me is like, if I get a desire, I take action immediately. I don't think about it. I don't tell other people about it. I tell one trusted person, confirmed it, gave me the mentor I needed. Boom, I took action. And within three months, I had my first fund up and going. And we were able to closed that in December, 2022. It's amazing. Raised some really great capital for an apartment complex in North Carolina. And I learned a lot of mistakes with that one. But again, like I just decided like, oh, if he, they can do it, I can do it. And I have so many people in my network that I could be a, you know, a fiduciary for them and tell them what I'm investing in. And I can also, you know, make some money at the same time, which is great because at this point in my life, like where I am, I don't work for free anymore. Like I'm going to make money somehow in the deal. And that's, you know, it sh that should happen for everybody, I think. And if I was to come to you as an investor, like why would I choose your fund over someone else's? Well, so my fund is special because I'm a fund of funds. So I'm going into another big fund. So with me, you're getting two fiduciaries. So this is two people who invest their own money in every single deal that we do. And we've all vetted it to make sure that this is a really great deal. I've lost enough money in the investing game to know I don't like to lose anymore. So I only pick things that I'm absolutely going to slay, that I'm absolutely going to win in. So that's, that's one thing. Another reason why somebody should invest with me is because I'm not just about taking people's money and going and putting it in the deal. I'm going to educate you on all of the things that I'm doing. You're now a part of my circle that I want to feed you. I want to give you opportunity. Even if it means I'm not going to financially benefit from it, I don't care. I'm going to teach you about the mindset of being a critical thinker as an investor, as a networker. If I like, you're just, I'm thinking about you. You're on my radar now. And so that's a really valuable place to be because I'm a connector. So you're going to get to where you want to go quicker, not only financially, but relationally as well. And I feel like you're a very like intuitive person. Yeah. Do you allow yourself to just trust your gut on deals or does it have to make sense on paper before you'll go in? 100% it has to make sense on paper. Okay. So in the beginning, I didn't do my due diligence on a lot of things. This was before I started a fund. This was years ago uh, when I was just investing my own money. And, you know, you have to have deals go bad to then understand like, I won't do that again. And that's a foolish thing to do. Okay. And I was foolish. Foolish people learn from their own mistakes. Wise people learn from other people's mistakes. And so this is why I share the mistakes because I'm like, learn from me. Okay. But now I, I learn from a lot of other people because I'm like, I don't want to keep making the same mistake. So I do due diligence on every single deal that we're going to go into. It has to make sense on paper first. And then I do a couple other checks. Like whoever, if, let's say it's a business I'm investing in. 
I just recently invested in a fitness boutique, boutique, and it's a franchise and it's going to do really well. I'm um, just because the people that are involved in it, first of all, it made sense on paper. And the next thing I go to is who's on the board of this franchise, like who is going to make sure that this thing wins. Uh, and the CEO of it has massive experience in growing fitness franchises. He's done a lot. And so I was like, yes, check. And then the founders, I believe in them. I've already seen their concepts work and they're great people. And so they also checked that. Another thing is like, can I help this business grow if, as an investor? So I don't want to just put my money here, but can I make sure that this is going to be successful through my network? And that was another check. Like, yes, of course, because I can find people who want to franchise this all over the country. So that was another yes, right? So there's lots of things that go into it. And the reason I learned some of that was by talking to other angel investors. I have friends who own venture, venture capital firms, and they've taught me some of these things to look for. And I'm just the person, I always want to be the dumbest person in the room. I'm not going in there trying to act like I know everything. I'm always asking questions of people who have what I want, and they'll give you nuggets. Like successful people love to teach other people. They are not trying to like keep it close to themselves. They're trying to give it away every single day. So I will like take out my phone as I'm asking a person a question, I'll record it. Because I'm like, I don't wanna miss anything that this person is about to say. Be that person, be that person. Do not be the, I know, I know, I know person. That's so annoying. I love that. <laughs> and with, with all the things that you've now been a part of in the real estate world, do you have a favorite type of deal? Like a favorite way to, to go after things? Oh gosh, it's so hard. So I'm like a multi-passionate person. So it's really hard for me to pick one thing. And I know that, you know, the gurus out there say to do like the one thing, like Warren Buffett, do the one thing. But for me, like I think my favorite way to make money work for me is by putting it into a multifamily fund with a very experienced sponsor, okay? So who I invest in with multifamily, they have a billion in assets under management and they've never had a deal go wrong. They at least always give a 1.7x equity multiple to their investors back. And so for me, I like being able to put money into that and know it's going to be growing. It's providing safe communities for people. And I'll see that money back with an equity multiple in about five years. I love that. I don't have to do anything. I'm not an operator at all. I just give the money and I check my investor updates every month. Like, I love that. And I'm also getting mailbox money from the cash flow on the property. So that's the easiest way to invest. But again, I'm, I, I grew up like in a very chaotic environment. And so I became an ER nurse at a young age because I love chaos. So I still tend to like want to get my hands in things, which is why I like flipping. Because like it's a, it gives me that little like jolt of adrenaline. Like you don't know what you're going to walk into. You don't know what you're going to get. So I get, you know, that little thing there too. So I can't just pick one, but I would say the favorite, my favorite way to receive is through that multifamily fund. Like that. And what would you say to people who say, I don't have money to invest? The, I don't have money to invest is a mindset, right? And if you speak like that and you say that out loud, you don't have money to invest and that will be your story for the rest of your life. But you can always find the money if you are resourceful enough. So one of the things I teach people all the time, I just did this for a recent flip that we did. I had, I was like, okay, I only want to be one third into this deal and I'm going to find two more partners to come in because I wanted to have more cash flow available for this multifamily fund I'm going into. So I went out and raised a couple hundred grand within like 48 hours to acquire this property. And you can always do that if you have a good deal and you've been investing in your network Maybe you don't have a track record. You need to you need to go and JV with somebody like me or somebody like Shane, my brother-in-law, who has the experience where you could go to a private money lender and say, hey, I'm partnering with Shane. He's done over 400 flips. We're looking for you know $100,000 to get this deal done. You're going to make 10% on your money and you're going to get it back in 60 days. Would you be interested in this in this deal? So people who understand money will go, where else am I going to make 10% on my money in the next 60 days? Like there's not a lot of opportunity like that. So you give it, it's an invitation. It's a, it's a huge opportunity for people. You're helping them out, right? So if you have that mindset and you have that confidence because you've partnered with the right people, boom, that's what you need to do. But 
If you have a lack of confidence, you don't believe that, you know, like you don't believe in yourself, people can feel that and smell that from a mile away. And I would never give my money to somebody like that. Like I just wouldn't. And they might be, usually those people are like the most uh, researched, like educated people, but they just don't have the confidence. And I'm just like, oh gosh, no. You know, like sad money don't make money. So I'm not giving it to that person.